So, hello everyone. Uh, we are going to start the next module uh, of Bio 100 Lab, which is about DNA fingerprinting. It's also called DNA profiling. Um, just like we have, uh, you know, these fingerprints, um, which makes us all different from each other. And these fingerprints are used to, you know, uh, differentiate between different people. Uh, in 1985, uh, Alec Jeffrey uh, in Leicester University actually discovered this uh, DNA profiling or DNA fingerprint uh, technique uh, in which he discovered that, you know, um, we can use uh, certain sequences within the DNA which uh, can act as fingerprint and you know they, they can distinguish between uh, siblings different individuals within the same family in a population etc we all uh, share um, all the humans for example they share 46 uh, chromosomes and all the dna sequence at the nucleotide level it's same nearly 99.9% .9 we have same uh, nucleotide sequence. For example, I uh, draw, um, you know, this um, linear line. Imagine this linear line represents all the uh, organization of different genes, all 46 chromosomes in a, in a linear uh, format. Um, and let's use um, similar sequence that uh, DNA sequence on 46 chromosomes of a different individual then uh, yet another individual and you know uh, let's have four individuals sequence from four individuals now when you will look at the genome organization and when we say genome organization that I refer to basically the genes present on the chromosomes and let's say you have uh, on these So the organization of the genes, so these rectangles I am drawing, they actually represent the protein coding genes. Their organization and their gene, uh, let's say this is gene A, B, C, and D. <clears throat> let's name different individuals. Um, let's say this is Tarek, this is me, um, this is my wife, then my son, another son. So, you know, Similarly, regardless of the names, you just take any individual in a population in your class, uh, in Lahore, in Pakistan, all over the world, we all will share same genome organization. And uh, as I said, we have, we will be showing similarity of 99.9% nucleotide level. We are 99.9% .9 same. Now, when we say DNA fingerprint, these are actually the sequences and which are basically the rest of 0.1%. This 0.1% sequence, what we are referring to as potential fingerprints, are actually these sequences. In between coding regions, okay? Now, these sequences, in the past, we used to call them junk DNA, useless, you know, this, these intergenic regions. But this 0.1% of the gene, this shows, you know, uh, variation. 
between two siblings. Between two siblings which are coming from same uh, parents. Uh, so what, what is special about these sequences? We call these sequences are nowadays uh, the ones which are routinely used are called STR markers. They stand for short tandem repeats. Now in these intergenic region, you know, imagine and, and think of a big scale, you know, this all represents, you know, 40 DNA sequence of total 46 chromosomes. These are, you know, on a small stretch, I'm just trying to highlight, you know, four genes which are conserved in all humans all over the world. But this sequence, I'm saying the sequence between genes is actually which is being used as fingerprint. So what is special about uh, this sequence? These are as named short tandem repeats. They are, you know, repeats of let's say um, three or four nucleotides. Look, A, C, C, A, C, C. Any random sequence, but in a repetitive manner. They are sprinkled in our genome and you know they could be two nucleotide, they could be three nucleotide, so they can be simply PA, PA, PA. So this is one, two, three, four. You keep going like this, they can be you know 10 to 12. Similarly, the three ones can be 10 to 12 or 10 to 14 or 15, whatever numbers, and they represent. They, 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 they become a certain length. For example, two times, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it makes 16 nucleotides. And then this is repeated, let's say, three times again, so 25 nucleotides. So a sequence of three nucleotides, or two nucleotides, four nucleotides, they are present here. Now, imagine we have. Uh, STR, a short tandem repeat, which is present between this in, uh, here in the intergenic region. Let's say we have this one, which is, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 8 times 8 repeats seven times so 56 nucleotides another individual has same one two three four five six and you know uh, Yusuf has you know seven let's say here is eight then imagine I have Twelve, so twelve, eight, six, seven. Now, these are the fingerprints. They are such sequences. The STRs. They are uh, nearly, which is the consensus, which also uh, is used by all the crime. Uh, uh, agencies which uh, probe the uh, different crimes it could be you know, a murder, it could be a theft etc. They use these kind of sequences and uh, they have found that there are 13, 13 specific loci specific positions on human chromosomes where all of us are different from each other and what they do normally these uh, STR repeats, they are used in uh, case of forensics, for example, as I said, in case of murder, in case of theft, in case of any crime. Uh, and then, <coughs> sorry, 
So other uh, thing is they are also used to solve the maternity uh, disputes like who is mother, who is father. Okay? Uh, you can use these sequences uh, and then you can differentiate who are the parents of these, these two kids. What we do uh, these str sequences um, you know they are primers pcr primers we are which are going to amplify which are going to analyze these sequences in the pcr and then running these pcr products on uh, uh, on the agarose gel electrophoresis we can base on because you, you can see here the fragment length will be different so if you have you know uh, 12 repeats here or 9 here 7 here whatever and 1 is like equivalent to nearly uh, nearly you know 16 nucleotides 16 nucleotides into 12 you can imagine the length of the fragment and then you know, since these are different, <coughs> you can easily distinguish between those, these four individuals. <coughs> the normal protocol is what we do, we isolate the total genomic uh, DNA. Uh, we can run PCR and these PCR products, they can be digested with restriction enzymes and then run on the agarose gel and you will see different uh, bands appearing on the agarose gels. Uh, for example, let's uh, perform an experiment. What we are planning uh, in your Bio 100 lab is you have a uh, you have a crime scene. There is a murder, and you know you have uh, found blood. Uh, sample or a hair sample uh, you know on the crime scene and you have certain suspects as well uh, which you have uh, gotten hold of so you have uh, suspects one uh, two and three and you have uh, you know from crime scene, you have a blood stain from the crime scene, or you, you have a hair sample from crime scene, and you are simply going to isolate DNA, <clears throat> and you can very easily isolate DNA from even, uh, you know, uh, you, you may have heard, you know, when there are... Um, accidents in the uh, in trains or you know massive uh, disaster in in case of aeroplanes and you know uh, unfortunately the dead bodies are burnt so they ask you to you know give us you know let's say uh, toothbrush of an individual because there are some cheek cells there so the dna required is really tiny amount and you also ask dna of parents there uh, or siblings there and you know you have these burnt dead bodies you take their dna you uh, use these 13 different loci of the str repeat markers in pcr and compare it with their parents and siblings and you know dna driven from just you know a, a toothpick uh, sorry the toothbrush of an individual can trace you because you have dna from dead body as well uh, so in crime scene also you do similar things so you isolate DNA, uh, after isolation of DNA you uh, perform PCR using these uh, 13 different markers which FBI also use uh, in, uh, in US uh, because there is a consensus all over the world that these 13 loci, um, they will, you will find difference. We may find similarity on one or two loci but you know when you map all 13 you will find definitely different. So let's say you isolated DNA and you after isolation of DNA you
ran PCR. So here's your KB letter, the marker. And you isolated DNA from each sample which is available to you from suspect 1, suspect 2, suspect 3, blood sample from crime scene and the hair sample from crime scene. And once you load on the gel using these different STR markers, So this is on the agarose gel electrophoresis when you load these PCR products applying the STR markers, STR primers. You see PCR products and just looking at the pattern you can see now compared with the crime scene blood sample and crime scene hair sample, the pattern of the fragments you can just see it matches the suspect one and you know this tells us that suspect one is actually the uh, culprit who has committed the, this this crime. Similarly, you can do uh, these kind of uh, DNA fingerprinting to solve the maternity disputes where you know there is a dispute. You know if there are two fathers or two mothers, they they uh, they are contesting that a baby belongs to them. Using DNA fingerprints, you can do similar STR ma mapping. And what do you do there? You will have STR markers on, you will take DNA from all the parents who claim to be, let's say there's father one, father two, uh, mother, and you know, uh, you will have uh, the baby which is disputed. And then you have the mark. Now remember, you can, in this case, the baby will be having STR markers, not identical, like we saw in the crime scene, where you know the STR markers in blood and hair sample exactly matched the uh, STR marker pattern of the suspect. Here, the child inherits. You know, mixture of both because child is hybrid. It, it has taken, you know, 23 chromosomes from mother, 23 from father. If you take mother DNA and two of the uh, contesting fathers, 